The last of our three main forms is called a standard form, and this is written in the form AX plus BY equals C. All right, when we go to write this a little bit later, you'll need to know that the A, B, and C all have to be integers, and there's a few other rules with that. But let's just take an example. This might be easiest to show you using an example to start with, and then from there, I think you'll probably get it, okay? Um, what happens here is when we plug in zero for the opposite variable, um, that we're looking for. So for example, if I want to find what the x-intercept is, if I plug in zero for y, well, two times zero is going to be zero. So that kind of just cancels. And then what I'd be left with is three x equals six. If I solve for that, of course, divide both sides by three, x is going to equal two. And so on my x-axis, I could, for this equation, put a dot at two on the x-axis. I can do the same thing for the y's as well. So since I want to find the y, I'm going to put in a zero for the opposite variable, x in this case. Three times zero is zero. So what I'm left with is just two y equals six. In fact, notice what I did there. I kind of covered this up. Sometimes I call this to my class the cover-up method because you cover up the one you're not looking for because when you plug in zero, it kind of goes away. Anyway, I'm left with two y equals six. If I solve for that, divide both sides by two, then y of course equals three. So on my y-axis, I can go up three, one, two, three, put a dot there, and then connect the two dots that I have on either axis, and that's going to make the line that represents the graph for this equation, three x plus two y equals six. Let's try one more. All right, this last example, it says four x minus two y equals 10. And so if I use that kind of cover up method again, plugging in those zeros, right? If I want to find the x, I'd plug in zero for y, so it's gone now. And I'd be left with four x equals 10. Notice this one's not going to turn out nice because four isn't, uh, four doesn't go into 10 evenly. Um, 10 divided by four is actually, what, two and a half? So 2.5 is what X is there. And then if I do the same thing for the Y's, cover up the X, negative two Y equals 10 is the other one. Negative two Y equals 10. This time it does work out a little bit better, divide by negative two and Y is gonna be a negative five. So now if I plot those two, negative 2.5 or two and a half for the X, one, two and a half, and then Y is at negative five, one, two, three, four, five. Now if I go through those two points, that is the line that represents the graph of this equation.